Hi, I'm Dr. Philip Boone, and this is a quick medical genetics lecture about the disorders of fatty acid oxidation. This is part three in a three video series. In the first video, we looked at the pathway of fatty acid oxidation. In the second video, we looked at the clinical features of the disorders of fatty acid oxidation. In this lecture three, we'll take a look at the acyl carnitine profile, as well as urine acylglycines and urine organic acids. These are three tests that we use to distinguish between the disorders of fatty acid oxidation and to make a diagnosis. We talked about testing for fatty acid oxidation generally in lecture two, so look toward the end of that lecture for a brief overview of the various modalities. This will mostly be an in-depth look at the acyl carnitine profile and a further explanation of urine acylglycines and urine organic acids. So let's dive in. So what is the acyl carnitine profile? What this is, is a look at various species of acyl carnitine. It's done either as an individual test that you would order or as part of the newborn screen. In either case, it's done by mass spec of either plasma in the case of an individual test that you order or a blood spot if ordered via the newborn screen. Now you can see abnormalities in the acyl carnitine profile in the disorders of fatty acid oxidation and also in some of the organic acidurias. Organic acidurias are not the focus of this lecture, so I'm actually going to ignore them entirely, but I hope in the future to have a specific lecture about them, and in that case, we would see what the acyl carnitine profile abnormalities would be in those disorders. Now, the acyl carnitines in the fatty acid oxidation disorders could be increased in terms of specific acyl carnitine species, could be decreased, or you could have an altered ratio. Um, and that's what the acyl carnitine profile looks at in order to distinguish which disorder you're dealing with. Now, in thinking about which species might be increased or decreased or have a different ratio, um, I want you to think about what the consequence of an enzyme that's knocked out would be. So in the fatty acid oxidation disorders, the downstream effects would be, you know, you're not making the things that fatty acid oxidation is supposed to do. So you're not making ketones as well, so you have a hypoketotic state and you're not making glucose or energy, so it's hypoglycemia. And hypoketotic hypoglycemia, sure enough, is one of the key features of fatty acid oxidation disorders. Now upstream, what you can get in terms of thinking about the effects, you can get some toxic compounds, for example, long chain fatty acids uh, in VLCAD deficiency, for example, build up and affect the heart, leading to a cardiomyopathy. And then if you have any species that is increased on account of being upstream of the enzyme block, you can get detectable species that one could identify via the acyl carnitine profile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a chart of acyl carnitine species uh, and carnitine species, and we're gonna look at which compounds are increased or decreased in various enzyme defects. Before we do that, if you've looked ahead, you might see some of this nomenclature is a bit new. So a C12 acyl carnitine, you can probably guess, is a 12 carbon acyl tail attached to a carnitine. But what about these OH and the colon one things? So we'll look at those for the C16 variety. So C16 in this case would refer to an acyl carnitine that's got a 16 carbon acyl tail linked to a carnitine. This would be a palmitoyl group or the official name would be a hexadecane oil group. Hexa six, Deca 10, so 16. Now the C16 one, what that would be, the one refers to that there's one double bond somewhere in here. So it's slightly unsaturated. Could be anywhere along there. The C16OH would be that there's a hydroxy group, in this case, a three hydroxy group there. The names, if you're curious, this would be hexadecane oil, and this would be three hydroxy hexadecane oil. So now you know what these mean. So let's jump in. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to start going through the chart that we had in lecture one. This is the pathway of fatty acid oxidation. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go through starting with the enzymes at the top and work our way down. Look at which species build up or which species are deficient in the various enzyme defects in order to fill out our chart. So let's start with the carnitine transporter. Um, if you mutate this enzyme, you get carnitine uptake disorder or primary carnitine deficiency. 
That deficiency, you might think, wait, but carnitine's not able to get in cells, so wouldn't it be at very high concentration in the serum and thus be very readily detectable at high concentrations? In fact, that's not the case because carnitine transporter is expressed in the kidneys. If you don't express it, you're not able to resorb carnitine from the urine. You urinate it all out, and you end up getting a profound deficiency of free carnitine. Other ways that we measure carnitine is total carnitine, meaning carnitine that's free and carnitine that's bound to acyl groups as acyl carnitine. And then we can measure acyl carnitines generally. Now, if you don't have carnitine available to be conjugated uh, to the acyl group via CPT1, you're going to have a decrease in acyl carnitines generally. We already mentioned you have a primary, primary carnitine deficiency, so your total carnitine is also going to be diminished as well. Now looking at our chart, what we see here is, sure enough, in carnitine uptake disorder, free carnitine is low, total carnitine is low, and acyl carnitine is low as well. So let's move on to our next enzyme that we'll look at, and this will be CPT1. This is carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, carnal, carnitine acyl transferase 1 is just a different name for the same enzyme. The job here is to take acyl coas, turn them into acyl carnitines. So the first thing that we would know is that if carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 is not working, our acyl carnitines are going to be low. Now there's some specific species that will be low. The fatty acids that come into the cell tend to be the long chain ones, so C16, C18. So those species of acyl carnitines specifically are going to be low, as well as acyl carnitines overall. So how about free fatty acids? How about total... Uh, sorry, not free fatty acids, uh, free carnitine and uh, total carnitine. So it turns out normal to high, not as profound as a difference uh, as in some of our other disorders. So let's look back at our chart. Um, sure enough, acyl carnitines and CPT1 deficiency are low. Our total and free carnitine is either normal or a little bit increased. And for some specific molecules, CPT1 causes low C16, low C18, low C181. Those are in our chart there. So let's move on. Our next enzyme that we'll look at is carnitine acyl carnitine transferase. That's CACT. So in CACT deficiency, you've made acyl carnitines, but as part of the carnitine shuttle, you're not able to bring them into the mitochondrial matrix. So in that case, what you get is you can get a buildup outside and this is the first enzyme uh, of a few enzymes that can cause uh, something called secondary carnitine deficiency. So just like carnitine in carnitine transport deficiency was not able to be resorbed from the kidney, a similar phenomenon is that if you get a buildup of acyl carnitines because of a defect in carnitine acyl carnitine translocase or CPT2 deficiency or these enzymes uh, of beta oxidation not working, you can get more acyl carnitines building up outside of this mitochondrial component and outside of the cell than you would normally expect. Those get urinated out and you can have a carnitine deficiency as a result of that. And so sure enough, for a defect here, a defect here, or the fatty acid oxidation disorders, you can lose so much that your free carnitine actually goes down, your total carnitine goes down, and specifically, it's the acyl carnitines that you're losing those go down as well. The only exception to that is that in the fatty acid, fatty acid oxidation disorders proper, you do have a buildup of some acyl carnitine species that's high enough that you do get an increase in your acyl carnitine overall. So let's take a look at that in our chart. So sure enough, carnitine acyl carnitine translocase defect. We have decreased free carnitine, decreased total carnitine in our uh, CPT2 deficiency, decreased free carnitine, decreased total carnitine, decreased acyl carnitine. Um, and then in the fatty acid oxidation disorders, decreased free carnitine, decreased total carnitine, but as I mentioned, the acyl carnitines are high. Now we also see some specific species that are altered in these enzyme defects. Um, and so if it's the acyl carnitines that get made by CPT1 and the block is just downstream of those, we can have some of those long chain acyl carnitine species that build up in our high concentration in 
CACT deficiency or CPT2 deficiency. So let's look at our chart for those. So sure enough, C14 acylcarnitines can be increased in CPT2 deficiency. We can have increased C16s, C16OH, uh, C181, um, and then for CACT deficiency, increased C16s, increased C18s, increased C181s. All right, so now let's move on, and we've moved out of this upstream part, and we can now move on to the uh, disorders of beta oxidation proper. And we'll start off with uh, SCAD. So in SCAD deficiency, I actually want you to think about which species of acylcarnitine do you think would build up in this disorder. So this is a problem of metabolizing acyl-CoA's that are very short. And so what we see there is that we get increase in the C4 species, increase in the C6 species as well in SCAD deficiency. So the next enzyme that we'll move on to that is the same general idea but a little bit different would be SCHAD or M slash SCHAD here. So it's the three hydroxyacyl CoA species that's just upstream. So those will build up. So you end up getting a similar length compound that builds up, but it tends to be the three hydroxyacyl version of it. So sure enough, C4OH builds up in SCHAD. Um, you can also see C10OH in the M slash as Chad enzyme deficiencies. So let's move on now to the most commonly mutated enzyme out of all of these, uh, at least in the United States, and that's MCAD. So MCAD deficiency, as I mentioned in the first lecture, is the most uh, prevalent fatty acid oxidation disorder. And in this case, it's the medium chain acyl-CoA's that cannot be metabolized. So sure enough, what we get is a buildup of those medium chain acyl-carnitines the C6 variety, the C8 variety, the C10 variety, and C10-1. One of the minor enzymes that I'll mention real briefly that's on our chart um, is MCKAT. You can get a buildup of the C10-OH variety of acyl carnitine if you have a defect there. Moving on, um, let's take a look at VLCAD. So VLCAD deficiency, um, you get acyl coas that build up that are toward the longer end. Um, so we start seeing those on our chart when we get to the C12 species. So increased there, C14, C14-1, and C16 as well. So now let's move on to what's a family of enzymes. Um, so LCEH, LCHAD, LCKAT, those are all part of the mitochondrial trifunctional protein, or TFP enzyme, or you can have a mutation of the LCHAD functionality by itself. So let's think about what happens there. So sure enough, you would get a buildup of some of the uh, regular old acyl carnitines. You'd also get the hydroxyacyl carnitines that would build up as well. So let's take a look at those. All right, so sure enough, what we see in trifunctional protein deficiency, increased 14-OH, increased C16, C16-OH, C18, C18-OH, and C18-1-OH. And then for the LCHAD deficiency specifically, we'll see increased C16, C16OH, C18, C18OH, and C18-1OH. So what we've done is, by looking at the pathway more than just a chart, what I've enabled you to do is to really think about a defect in any one of these enzymes, what the result would be. And of course, now that you know about this lecture, should you encounter an acyl carnitine profile, you know how to interpret it. And if you need a little bit of help, you can look at this chart, and this will be your cheat sheet to know which fatty acid oxidation disorder is most likely present. So let's look at the urine acylglycines and urine organic acids very quickly to round out the lecture. So urine acylglycines, what the name suggests is it's an acyl group conjugated to something else other than carnitine, and in this case it's glycine. These end up um, being made in a similar fashion to the acyl carnitines in that the chain length of the acyl group mirrors what you would see in terms of acyl carnitines and it gives you a clue as to what disorder you're dealing with. This is a metabolite that ends up in the urine and so that's where you detect it. So these can be positive um, in terms of uh, a result of the laboratory test even if the acyl carnitine profile is a false and negative. So you have a fatty acid oxidation disorder but you didn't pick it up on your acyl carnitine profile. And in terms of the species that you're looking at, so for example butyrylglycine, 
uh, is a C4 version of an acyl group attached to glycine. And as you might have guessed, if you have a C4 species buildup, um, whether it's an acyl carnitine or acyl glycine, you're talking about SCAD deficiency. Now, superreal glycine is a C8 molecule, and you might have guessed here, if you got C8 attached to glycine, you're talking about MCAD deficiency. Now, I want to point out just real briefly as an aside, um, the nomenclature here, so SCAD with one D, that's the enzyme. If you want to talk about the deficiency, you add another D there. Um, uh, in most cases here, I've just put the name of the enzyme in order to save space and to be more clear. All right, so the urinorganic acids, um, these are dicarboxylic acids made from omega oxidation of fatty acids. And what does that mean? So fatty acids, if they're not going to be metabolized via beta oxidation, um, and in beta oxidation, what we're doing is we're chewing off two carbons at a time from that end of the molecule. What omega oxidation is, is it's a minor way in which fatty acids can be metabolized that becomes more important if beta oxidation isn't working. And in that case, we're metabolizing it from the omega carbon, meaning the last carbon from this end of the molecule. So what you end up getting is you get a COOH on one end, like a free fatty acid, but then you get it on the other end as well. These end up getting um, urinated out and you can detect them. Seeing them in high concentrations would be abnormal if beta oxidation is working, but if beta oxidation is not working, some of them can build up. Now in carnitine uptake disorder, carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 and carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 deficiencies, you don't really see these or it's kind of nonspecific. And one way to think about that is that it's not that one specific um, uh, acyl carnitine is at super high concentration. So one of these urinorganic acids is not at super high concentration in these disorders either. And those are the upstream defects in terms of uh, where in the pathway of fatty acid oxidation they lie. However, the downstream defects, parts of uh, the real circle of beta oxidation, those can result in very high concentrations of some of these uh, dicarboxylic acids in the urine. And as an example, we'll show MCAD deficiency, um, the C6 to C10 dicarboxylic acids build up a lot. Um, for BLCAD deficiency, at C6 to C14. And for uh, LCAD deficiency or uh, mitochondrial trifunctional protein deficiency, um, it'd be C6 to C14 species as well. But in this case, it would be the three hydroxy variety of them. All right, so uh, the final thing I want to mention is that for references, um, there's quite a number of them that I used in composing this and that I thought would be uh, valuable if you want to learn more. Take a look at the in info section below the video. Finally, I just wanted to say thank you for um, watching the videos. If you've made it this far in this series, you've understood fatty acid oxidation disorders, which is a complicated group of disorders. I hope that I've broken it down in an understandable way such that if you encounter a patient or a lab result that uh, pertains to this family of disorders, that it's interpretable for you. Uh, as always, I appreciate your viewership. If you have comments or questions, you can email at quickmedicalgenetics at gmail.com or post in the comments below. And as always, I'm looking for video contributors uh, to make quick medical genetics a truly crowdsourced venture for genetics education. Thank you very much.